Our gracious Father, we were miserable sinners. We committed sin like a drinking water, and we were on the way to eternal hell because of our sins. But Lord, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to save us, and the blood of Jesus washed away all our sins, saving us and making us your children. So Lord, thank you so much for this glory we are having in Christ. And now we have this hope that we will join our Lord in heaven and will we'll rejoice forever and ever in that um, eternal life with you. So Lord, even though in this world we are suffering, and in this world um, sometimes we make mistakes, and sometimes um, we are very depressed, but we know that one day you will come again to take us to heaven. So Lord, until that time, strengthen us so that we can spend all the time to please you and glorify you. Especially, we know that when we preach the gospel and when the lost souls are won, you are so happy. So that's why we are having the Bible seminar from the first day of November to the first. So Lord, we try to invite as many foreigners as possible this time. So please help us and be with us and use us so that we can be the instrument for your ministry. So Lord, this time we pray that we'll, we'll uh, bear many fruits for your glory through the Bible seminar by uh, saving some lost souls through the Bible seminar. And Lord, uh, some brothers and sisters are on the way. Please help them to be here so that we can be together. From the beginning to the end, I commit the rest of time unto your mighty hand. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's open the Bible. First uh, Kings, First Kings chapter 15. First Kings chapter 15, verse 4 and 5. First Kings chapter 15, verse 4 and 5. If you have found it, let's read it together. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem by setting up his son after him and by establishing Jerusalem. Because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. We know that uh, David is the person after God's heart, and he is one of the great examples for us to follow. And that's why in this book, um, we see uh, these are seven qualities are uh, David's uh, many good qualities. So David was faithful, and David was modesty, which means he was humble, and David was uh, very patient, and he was also courageous, and he got a big heart, and he was a trustful and penitence. Penitence means he repented when he uh, committed sin. So all these, all these uh, qualities, uh, we'll see while we are studying Second Samuel. And the reason why God wrote down all these qualities are is because we have to follow His footsteps. Uh, God wants us to become like a David. So. Even in this uh, scripture we just read, verse 5, because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And you know what happened. Uh, even though we didn't cover it yet, um, King David, one day he committed adultery and eventually he killed that uh, woman, Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, to cover up his, uh, his crime. So other than that matter of Uriah, he was perfect, actually. He didn't turn aside from anything that God commanded him. 
and David, um, again and again, when you read um, 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, you see the heart of David. For example, he had uh, two chances to kill King Saul, but he didn't, he didn't uh, try to kill him because King Saul was anointed by God. And when he cut the corner of his clothes, uh, he was really nervous and he, actually he didn't feel uh, okay about that. So that much, he really uh, feared God and respected God. So through this Bible study, uh, we learn all these um, good qualities of David and we'll try to apply, we'll try to uh, learn to become like a David through this Bible study. So let's go to the, uh, this part here in the textbook. It would be well to compare Saul and David and roughly measure their stature one against the other. Actually, Saul and David, they have many similar things in their life, but the result, outcome, was so different. That's why we have to compare them and see what, what made um, Saul a great failure before God. So let me continue to read uh, some similarities first. Both were kings of Israel, yes, which means God appointed them to become kings, right? Both reigned about the same length of time, 40 years. Not only them, uh, later, even King Solomon, he reigned uh, for 40 years, right? The first three kings of Israel, King Saul, King David, King Solomon, they all reigned uh, for 40 years. Both had the loyal support of the people. People follow them. It was okay. And both had the promise of God's power to back them. Because God already anointed them, which means that God said, I will help you. Because becoming king is not an easy task. So, both, there are many similar things in their lives. Then what happened? The result? Yet, Saul was a failure. Actually, uh, uh, he is the one of the greatest failure in the Bible. Right? And David was a success. One of the greatest success in the Bible. So they, they uh, turned up very different at the end. So we have to learn why. What made, made the difference between uh, David and Saul? Saul's name is a blot on Israel's history. It me means like a, it's a shame, actually. And David's name is honored today both by Jew and Gentile. And we are Gentiles, right? So we remember uh, King David's name and we want to follow him. So what is the reason for the differences? What is the reason? Um, it would be in our best interest to find out for these same factors may work in our own lives and knowing them may help us to correctly choose the forces that will carry us on a godly course. Um, you know that there are thousands of people mentioned in the Bible, many people actually, so many people. So why God wrote down the lives of thousands of people in the Bible? So that we can learn from their uh, success and failure. And this King Saul and King David, they lived almost at the same time, you know, one after the other, and they had many similarities, but later we see that the result is so uh, different. Saul, King Saul had a brilliant start and for a while made good. But with success came what? Pride. This was the problem. So in one word, the pride failed Saul. So let's turn to uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Proverbs. So in the textbook, try to look up all the scripture so that we, we know what the Bible says about that. So uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Okay, let's read it together. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride goes before destruction, which means that if you are proud, you will fall. You will fall down hard. Actually. 
Do you remember Satan? Satan was a beautiful angel, but he tried to become like a god. He was very proud, and that's why he rebelled against God, and he fell down. Which we read from which book of the Bible? Isaiah chapter 14. Okay. In Isaiah chapter 14, we see that Satan, he wanted to become like a god. He wanted to become uh, higher than God, actually. He wanted to take the position of God. That's why uh, he fell down. Right? So pride. Pride means, pride is this one. You know, We don't need God. We can become like a god. But on the other hand, the humble people say, God, without you, I cannot do anything. You are everything to me. That's what David thought, actually. God, you are my fortress. You are my rock. You are my salvation. You are everything to me. Without you, I don't know what to do, what I can do. God, please be with me. Right? So, with the success came pride. You have to remember, in the beginning, King Saul was winning battle after battle. That made him proud. Even though it was God's blessing, he just took it as his own victory. That's why he became proud. So 35 years of his reign were spent in insecurity and failure. First five years were okay, but the next 35 years of his reign was spent in insecurity and failure. You know, insecurity, he was comparing himself with David, and then he, he felt so bad because people were praising David more than they praise uh, King Saul. So, uh, he felt insecure. Insecure. Don't feel insecure. Okay? God made us all different. Even though you see some brother or sister who are, maybe uh, they are better than you in many respects, it's okay. I always say, if you are smart, it's because God made you smart. Okay? If you are not so smart, it's okay. It's God who made you not so smart. Okay? <laughs> so why, uh, you know, why envy others when we know, of course, we have to do our best, but uh, sometimes we remember the movie, Wolfgang uh, Amadeus Mozart. Or well, anyway, the, regarding the Mozart, there's another man, Salier. Uh, who, were, who was always envying uh, Mozart, right? Because Mozart was gifted. Uh, he could really compose the music so well. So Salier was asking God, God, why you gave him, the Mozart, Amadeus, uh, such a gift? And you didn't give me such a gift like that. It's okay. You know, we are all different, right? So he had lost his hold on God. Later he left God. Pride and jealousy. Pride and jealousy were his undoing. Uh, undoing. I didn't know this, the meaning of the words. So when you see uh, the English word, which you don't understand, you have to look it up, look it up in the dictionary. So doing, undoing means region of failure. Region of failure. So the pride and jealousy were his, King Saul's undoing. Okay? Undoing. Region of failure. Pride and jealousy. So, we should not be proud or jealousy, right? That's what we have to learn from his life. He finally died a suicide in a lost battle, and he left his kingdom at war with his neighbors and divided in his loyalty. Um, he committed suicide. We'll talk about that later. It's a sin, a uh, great sin, because... Uh, Killing others is a sin. It's called a murder. But suicide is killing yourself, right? The same. You're killing. So that was the uh, great sin. Let me continue. Similar to Saul, David lost his hold on God. When? Um, in 1 Samuel, at the end of the 1 Samuel, you know that he was running, running away from uh, King Saul, and he finally went to the Philistines. Let's turn to 1 First Samuel, First Samuel, chapter twenty-seven, 
First Samuel chapter 27, verse 1 and 2. First Samuel chapter 27, verse 1 and 2. Okay, let's read it together. And David said in his heart, Now I shall perish someday by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape to the land of the Philistines. And Saul will despair of me to seek me any more in any part of Israel, so I shall escape out of his hand. Then David arose and went over with the six hundred men who were with him to Achish, the son of Maok, king of Gath. You know Philistines? Philistines was the enemy of Israel. The Philistines is the one who always come uh, to destroy Israel again and again. And now you see, King David is going to the Philistines. Uh, in the life of King David, I see some pattern. He is asking God about what to do again and again. But here, in verse 1 and 2, do you see he is asking God? Do you see uh, he is asking God whether he will go to the Philistines or not? No answer? Do you see or do you don't see? No. He didn't ask God, right? He said, now I shall perish someday by the hand of Saul. I think um, it was a great mistake of King David. Because Samuel already, Samuel already anointed David to become king. You know, to become king of Israel, you should be alive, right? Right? Do you remember that when Abraham tried to sacrifice um, Isaac, Hebrews chapter 11 says, he believed, Abraham believed, even if he killed Isaac, God will raise Isaac up again because God gave him the promise that God will make a great nation out of Isaac. Do you understand? Even though, even if Abraham kill Isaac and burn him as a sacrifice, as a burnt offering. He believed God will make him rise up again. Actually, right? That is a great faith. So if, if, if David also, if he had faith, of course we understand he was uh, on the run for such a long time. Uh, so maybe now he became so depressed. Maybe he uh, was so down. So he says, I shall perish someday by the hand of Saul. I believe. Now, if he really trusted God, he shouldn't have said this one, right? So he said, uh, I will go to the land of the Philistines because uh, King Saul would not come after him in the land of Philistines. That was true. Because uh, how can King Saul go to the enemy's land, right? So he will not come after King David anymore. But it was a bad decision. Because later, you see that David even lied to, to the Philistines. Verse 9 and 10. Verse 9 and 10. Uh, let's read it together. Whenever David attacked the land, he left neither man nor woman alive, but took away the sheep, the oxen, the donkeys, the camels, and the apparel, and returned and came to Akish. Then Akish would say, Where have you made a raid today? And David would say, Against the southern area of Judah, or against the southern area of the Jeremiah, or against the southern area of the Kenites. You see what this happen, what's happening here? Actually, uh, David went somewhere and attacked them and took everything from there. But he lied to Akish. I went to the area, one of the area of Judah. Why? Because Judah, I mean Israel and the Philistines are enemies. So if King David says, I attacked one village in Judah, then Akish will trust David more and more. So he lied. Even though he didn't attack any of the uh, village in, in Israel, he said, I was in the, and I took these spoils from the area of Judah. He lied. So that's what happened. This is one of the darkest times uh, of David. So let me continue to read. Similar to Saul, David lost his hold on God. 
after David had spared Saul, David seemed every inch a king and he was willing to wait for God to tell him that he would, he would surely prevail. He, he expected everything would be okay because he spared Saul twice. He was at a high point and his training seemed complete. He thought he would be king soon, right? However, when David realized that his life was in danger, he made the great mistake of associating himself with the Philistines instead of continuing to trust God. So let's see. King Saul made a mistake, but even King David made a mistake too. So what made the difference? The difference was David repented, right? David repented, but King Saul didn't. We can make a mistake from time to time in our Christian life too. But whether God will use us more or not depends on whether we repent or not on our sins. So the devil would rather throw a man when he is on the height, which means King David spared the soul twice and he showed somehow faithfulness to God and then he thought everything would be okay. He was at a very high point, but there he fell down actually. So let's turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Let's read it together. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. What does that mean? If you think you are standing, you are okay, you are strong, then be careful because you might fall. Right? Later, later, David fell again, and it was also when he was strong. You know, everything went very well. There was a battle, but David didn't even go out to the battlefield because he was very strong. The general said, King, you should stay in Jerusalem. We'll go out and we'll win the battles. Don't worry. So he was strong, right? That time, he became lazy. He was sleeping. And he committed sin of other three and eventually murder. So this is true. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands. If you think you are standing, take heed. Take heed means be careful. Watch out that you might fall. Okay. So when, um, suppose in our Christian life, suppose uh, you evangelize someone and he or she got saved. Also, you know, you are serving the Lord in the maybe the church school or you are uh, one of the leaders and then everything goes well. That time, sometimes you are off the guard and you might fall down. Okay. So we have to be always careful because who is like a roaring lion? Satan, right? Satan is like a roaring lion roaming around to attack any Christian who think they are standing, right? So uh, the devil would rather throw a man when he is on the heights. He falls farther and harder. I think this is really true. This is really true. If you are already down, you cannot, you cannot go deeper, actually. But when you are standing, you feel harder, and you, feel, uh, you, you fall farther and harder. That's what happens. So, and he threw David. He means uh, Satan, the devil, threw David. For it was at that time that David passed into one of the worst periods of his life and stayed there for almost a year and... A half. So David was staying in the land of the Philistines, lying, and even he was almost fought against Israel because uh, Achish, the leader of the Philistines, he wanted to take he wanted to take David to the battle against Israel. But uh, the other leaders of the Philistines, when they saw David, they said, "No, he is a, he is an Israelite. He might." turn against us and he might fight against us. That's why 
King David didn't have to fight against his own people. I think that was um, God's grace, right? So anyway, uh, let's, let me read this underlined part. David fell from a mountain peak of spiritual victory and privilege to a black valley of defeat. He fought, fell very hard, actually, right? And he deliberately chose to stay there weak and discouraged for a long time. So the time with the Philistines were one of the darkest time of King David. Let's remember, you know, even a good Christian, sometimes they, they, are, they are going through the dark, dark time, actually. You know, you know we, we feel down, we feel very uh, tired, weary, and we feel powerless. David was also there. So when you feel like that, when you feel you are down, read Psalms. Psalm is the best medicine for the depressed time. You know Psalm? Okay. Psalm, when you, when you open the Bible in the middle, the Psalm is almost in the middle, right? And some people say Psalm is the heart, heart of the Bible, heart of the Bible, because it's the middle. And then most of the Psalms were written by David, especially when he was so down, he was crying, he was weeping, and he... Uh, one day he said he, he cried too much, so his bed was floating in his tears. Uh, of course, it's uh, an exaggeration, but he really wept a lot uh, during his dark time. So, he was there. You know, King David was there. David's faith had collapsed totally, right? Without God's counsel. I told you, he didn't ask God when he was moving to the land of Philistine. He left the country of God's people and went to live in the land of the enemy, hopelessly certain of dying at Saul's hand unless he escaped, which was wrong, right? Uh, he, had, he was supposed to trust God, then God would help him, but he just left. He joined Achish, king of God, who gave him Ziklag in which to live. You know what happened in Ziklag, actually, um, when King David, uh, it was be before he became king, so David came back to Ziklag because he couldn't fight against Israel. He found everything is gone. Okay, I asked you to read the Bible before you come here. So this is the Bible quiz. Which people took everything from David in Ziklag when he came back? Amalekites, thank you, brother Peter. <laughs> Sorry, there's no gift, but <laughs> no prize. You'll get one there. <laughs> so when he came back to Ziklag, uh, the Amalekites already there, they took everything from him, including his wives and his uh, properties. Basically, uh, he had nothing. You know why, what, why that happened? Here, David lied to Achish to win his favor. He was also lying, saying that he had raided the people of Judah when he had not. David met calamity. At last, he flung himself upon God. So, uh, this is what happens. When everything was taken from David, that time he remembered how to pray to God again. So, let's turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30. Now he came back to God. First uh, uh, Samuel chapter 30, verse 4. Verse 4. Let's read it together. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you done that? You are weeping so much, you have no power to weep anymore. Uh, I never had such an experience, actually. Uh, this might have been really, really tough time for them. Because uh, uh, not only the property, they lost all their family members. Their wives and children were all gone, right? Actually, they didn't know who took them. And they didn't know where they are gone. They had no idea. So they were weeping and weeping. And for David, this was the, one of the most 
difficult time because in verse 6, now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. What happened was the people who were following David, now they said, Let's kill David. You know, it's his fault. He was our leader, but he was leading us uh, in a wrong way. That's why all our wives and children were taken. Let's stone him. You see? Okay, what happened was, look at this. David. Everything was taken from him. Everything. Nothing left. And even the people who followed him, they turned against him. And they now say, let's stone him. This is like um, the worst time, worst kind of thing a man can experience. Who experienced this? Jesus, actually, right? Jesus, he had nothing, and later he, even his uh, disciples all ran away from him, right? Even his, the, the leader, one of the leaders of his disciples, Peter, denied him three times, like that, right? So Jesus understands when we uh, suffer, actually. Even David, he was there. He was there. So everything was taken. And even his friends were those people who followed him. They tried to stone him. That time, that time. This is, the, uh, this is amazing that at the end of verse 6, at the end of verse 6, but David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. He strengthened himself in the Lord. Now he remembers God again. Oh God, you promised me to lead, to, to, to make me king, and you, you are the one I trust. So what happened is, verse 7, Then David said to Aviathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, Please bring, bring the effort here to me. And Aviathar brought the effort to David. Effort is uh, you know, the, some clothes of the priest which they use when they are asking God about something. So verse 8, let's read it together. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. You see here again, David asked God again. Before he used to do that, but he forgot about it. And now, when he was so down in his life, he remembered, oh, I have to ask God. So when he inquired of the Lord, God said, pursue them, follow them. You'll get everything back. This is what happens even in our life, even in our Christian life too, sometimes, right? You remember David. When everything is taken from you and no one is supporting you, no one is helping you, even your closest friend, they abandon you, they leave you. So when you feel alone, you have nothing. What you should do? You inquire of God. You ask God, God, what should I do? Right? So that's what David did. So... He asked God what to do. God answered, and under his guidance, David had a real victory over his enemies. He took everything back. But before that, one more thing you have to remember. 1 Samuel chapter 30, uh, verse 11. Verse 11. Let's read it together. Then they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. And they gave him bread, and he ate. And they let him drink water. They found one Egyptian. They didn't know who this was, but they helped him, right? Because he was dying. Actually, uh, later he said he, he was sick, so his master left him to die. Right? So what happened was, David was, had a really kind heart, big heart, kind heart. So he wanted to help this Egyptian, and actually he is the one who gave David all the information he needed to retrieve what was taken from him. Verse 12, And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. 
So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him, for he had eaten no bread, no drunk water for three days and three nights. He was dying, but they helped him. And then later, he was giving this, um, he was saying that uh, th those Amalekites took everything from Ziklag, and they, uh, he showed the way to, to where they are. So verse 15, let's read it together. And David said to him, Can you take me down to this troop? So he said, Swear to me by God that you will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will take you down to this troop. You see here, David saying, Can you take me down to this troop? He was really kind. He's not saying, Take me to them, like that. Okay? Uh, David. David has a compassion, actually. So later you see when he heard Saul and Jonathan died, he even wrote a, a, a song for them, right? So his heart was always kind. And he was kind to this Egyptian without knowing, without knowing, actually. Because you can meet anyone on the road, right? You don't know who that person is, and you don't know whether he will, he can help you or not. But he just showed kindness to this Egyptian, and this Egyptian uh, showed the way to this Amalekites later, right? Okay, so, so this is the conclusion uh, regarding the comparison of Saul and David. Notice what happened at almost exactly at the same time in the lives of Saul and David. Saul. Okay, this is the conclusion. Un, unrepentant sinner. You'll see. Saul was a sinner. So is David. David is also a sinner. But the difference is, Saul was an unrepentant sinner. Went down to death, dragging his family and his country with him. Uh, not only his family died, but also his country, Israel, was in danger because of Philistines at the time. David, a repentant sinner, was given a glorious victory over the enemy, and many were saved with him. The only difference between them is whether they repented or not. What was the difference? Repentance, repentance, right? I was studying the Bible and I found out one thing, one weakness of God, weakness. God has a weakness. Do you know that? Some people say, no, God might, doesn't have any weakness. He's so strong. Well, he has one weak point. Whenever a sinner repents, he forgives them. That is his weak point. You see? So suppose we committed such a terrible sin, which God really hates. And when we repent, and when he goes back to God, does he forgive us or not? Could you please answer? <laughs> yes, he does, right? Okay, so later, you commit the same sin again, and you re repent again, and you go back to God, would, we, would he, would God receive you or not? Yes, he would, right? Again and again. How many times? When Peter was asking Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother? Jesus said, how many times? 70 times 7, which means 490 only? No, actually, more than that. Again and again and again, right? So in the Bible, you will see, uh, even in the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, the younger son took all the money he was supposed to take when father died, he took it and he went far, far away and he spent all the money with his friend and he became a beggar. He came back, nothing, with nothing. What happened when he came back? His father forgave him, received him, and put him back into his position as son again. And that is the love of God. I will give you... Um, and let's turn to Lamentation. After Jeremiah, there's a Lamentation of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Lamentations, after Jeremiah. This is, was also written by Jeremiah, right? Lamentations. 
chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 22, 23. Let's read it together. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Uh, we are not finished. We always have hope in God. Through the mercies of God. Because His compassions fail not. You know compassion? God's love, God's mercy, God's grace, God's compassion, they fail not. It's always there. And they are new every morning. Every morning is a new day. When we repent on our sins and when we go back to God, God always receives us. Right? Yes. And I will give you two examples which you have to remember. Uh, in the history of Israel, many, many kings were evil and wicked, but these two kings are one of the the most evil kings in the, in the history of Israel, but when they repented, God forgave them. So I will give you two examples. Let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 21. 1 Kings chapter 21. This is about Ahab. Okay. Um, First Kings chapter 21. Verse 19 and 17 to 19. Yes. First Kings chapter 21, verses 17 to 19. Let's read it together. Then the word of the Lord came to Eliza the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who lives in Samaria. There he is in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone down to take possession of it. You shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, have, your, have you murdered and also taken possession? And you shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, dogs shall lick your blood, even yours. What if it was, one day, King Ahab wanted to take the vineyard of Naboth. So he, the king was asking Naboth, please sell your property to me, the vineyard. And Naboth said, no, king, I cannot sell it to you. So King Ahab was, had a problem, right? And he was kind of lying on the bed because he was so sad. And uh, what is the name of his wife? Jezebel, right? Jezebel came and he, she was asking, King, why are you so down? And he's, he explained about the vineyard of Naboth and Jezebel, the evil queen. She said, you are king. Why you are, you know, you can do anything you want. And then Jezebel gave him some, you know, this bad idea. So what happened was, um, King Ahab, took two evil men and uh, they gave the false testimony of Naboth. They said, this Naboth, he, uh, he cursed God and king, so they killed Naboth, right? Because that's what the king asked them to do. And then after Naboth died, uh, this uh, king Ahab took the vineyard, right? So that's why God sent Elijah saying, you will die because of this sin. So let's see what happened. Um, verse, verse 27 to 29. Let's read it together. So it was when Ahab heard those words that he tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his body and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went about mourning. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah to Tishbite saying, See how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the calamity in his days. In the days of his son, I will bring the calamity on his 
house. So what happened was this Ahab, he repented. And he, were, he tore his clothes and then he put sackcloth on his body and he fasted and he lay in sackcloth and he went about mourning. He showed repentant heart before God and that's why verse 28, uh, 29, God said, See how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the calamity, the punishment, the punishment in his days. This is amazing actually. This Ahab, you know how, how evil he was. He tried to kill Elijah and he was worshipping Baal, right? And because of his sin, it didn't rain uh, three and a half years in Israel. And he searched everywhere to kill Elijah. And maybe Elijah, this time, he might have said to God, God, how can you do this, you know? He tried to kill me, this King Ahab, and he was worshipping idols, so you are forgiving him because he repented? Like that, right? But that's what he did. That's what he did. The, one of the most evil king of Israel. Even when he was repenting, God forgave him. Okay? Let me ask you, is any of you more evil than King Ahab? No. You, know, you don't worship idol and you don't uh, kill somebody to take uh, the vineyard, right? This King Ahab was really, really evil king. But God forgave him. Right? One more thing, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 33, there's another king of Judah this time. The Ahab was king of Israel in the north. So uh, let's see, Second Chronicles chapter 33. Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse 9. Uh, Second Chronicle, chapter 33, verse 9. Uh, this is about King Manasseh. Manasseh. So let's read verse 9 together. So Manasseh seduced Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. So let's remember this king, Manasseh, what he did was he was more evil than the people, the, the nations God destroyed before the children of Israel. Like when Israel came to the land of Canaan, there were seven tribes and then God said, destroy them all because they were so evil. So let's see what uh, Manasseh did actually. Verse 3, let me read. Uh, this is what King Manasseh, Manasseh did. For he rebuilt the high places with uh, which... Hezekiah, his father, has broken down. He raised up altars for the Baals and made wooden images, and he worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. So King Hezekiah destroyed the high places, but he built it again, and then he was uh, building the altars for the Baals and all kinds of images, right? Verse 5, let's read it together. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. In the temple of God, he built these altars, altars for the idols, right? Verse 6, and he caused his sons to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Himnom. He practiced soothsaying, used witchcraft and sorcery, and consulted mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Actually, he did whatever he could do to provoke God to anger. Right? So that's why Manasseh is one of the most evil king in, in Israel. And that's why this is what happened. Verse 22. Uh, verse uh, 10, verse 10, sorry, verse 10 to 13. Verse 10 to 13. Let's read it together. And the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they would not listen. Therefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the army of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh with the hooks, 
bound him with bronze fetters and carried him off to Babylon. Now when he was in affliction, he implored the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed to him. And he received his entreaty, heard his supplication, and brought him back to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. This is amazing. So God used the Assyrians to take him as a prisoner, as captive. So he was in the chains and he was taken to Babylon. But there, what happened? Verse 12. Now when he was in affliction, he implored the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his father. King Ahab humbled himself. King Manasseh humbled himself. Verse 13. And prayed to him. And he received his entreaty. God forgave him, actually. So, later, God brought him back to his position as king. God forgave Manasseh even though he was really evil king. So you see, there is a, there's a pattern in the Bible. Pattern means God forgives any repentant sinner, and God bless them. It is because people do not repent that they go to hell. Do you know that, right? Once they repent, and once they accept the love of Jesus Christ, they are saved and they go to heaven. But people reject God's love. People refuse to take the gift of salvation. They do not repent. So, look at this. The only difference between Saul and David. Both were sinners. But Saul was an unrepentant sinner. He didn't repent. But David was a Repentant sinner. And that's what made all the differences between Saul and David. Right? So, when you make a mistake, or when you uh, do something which God doesn't like, you can repent and we can always come back to God. And God will take you back. God will... Uh, have you back and he will bless you again. So repentance. Repentance was the uh, difference between Saul and David. Okay, I will stop here. Uh, always I'm telling you, please um, read the textbook as well as the Bible so that when you come, you understand uh, better through this Bible study. And this is not for you. This is for those who are watching uh, this Bible study on YouTube. Uh, please leave uh, some comments on YouTube so that we know who are watching and we can be encouraged by your comment. So please leave comments. This is for those who are watching the video tape, uh, uh, this, this video on YouTube. Okay? okay, let's pray together. Our gracious Father, we saw your compassion for King David, even though David made a great mistake when he went to the land of Philistines, when he prayed, you helped him again to take back every property and his family members who were taken before. And Lord, we learned also the difference between King Saul and King David, even though they made mistakes and they were in the almost same situation. Saul did not repent, but David did and that made all the differences and Lord in our Christian life also sometimes uh, we are going far away from you and we don't know we are not we are not so sure whether when we come back you will forgive us but today from the story of King Ahab and King Manasseh we also learned that whenever we repent you will forgive us and you will restore our position and we will have the sweet fellowship with you again with our repentance. So Lord, please help us to understand all these lessons so that when we are also down in our Christian life, we can always remember your mercy and we can go back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for this time and all this encouraging word. 
And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.